military stalker, so my husband, Ted, is in the military. We have generally lived on base every station we have been to because the surrounding towns can be very crime-ridden and sketchy and with my husband gone most the time the extra security is appreciated, I work from home due to us moving so often. So one afternoon I was taking a break. Had made a bite to eat and was snuggling up on the couch with my dog. That's when I heard the sliding glass door open. It was so nonchalant I thought it was Ted. I saw my cat run from the kitchen and a shadow standing near the door entering it, I thought maybe he had come back for something so I called out to him and was like what are you doing home? Did you forget something? No answer. This is where I got just an eerie feeling. After I asked what he was doing I saw the shadow move and heard the click of the sliding door lock. From there he walked to the laundry room and shut the door. I still had not received a response. So I'm sitting on the couch scared out of my mind and I call my husband hoping to hear his phone in the laundry room, I don't hear a ring but he answers. I asked him why he came home and didn't answer me and all he says is that wasn't me. Grab the dog and get in your car. I freak, after getting off the phone with Ted I grab the dog and run to my car. From there I call the military police. Waiting for them was probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. When they got there they cleared the house and found no one. They asked me to make a statement and even they were baffled that someone would try this on a base, we still live here. I am so scared he will come back. Murderer in the house, a guy I work with told me a similar freaky story once. He was a kid visiting in his grandma in Atlanta on a hot summer night. He slept on the floor right by the front door, which was left open, screen door, as it was hot. From what he told me he woke up in the middle of the night to a man crouching down on the other side of the screen door looking at him. When he woke, the man winked at him and left. The next day it was discovered his neighbors had been murdered. Real life the grudge. This might not be as creepy as the other stories I've read in the answers, but it actually happened and it was really odd, at least to me and my mom, I usually go to sleep with the TV on and no sound, and that night was not an exception, I had gone to bed early and woke up in the middle of the night, agitated, uneasy. There was so much noise, almost unbearable. When I looked up, there was the TV on as I had left it, but there was this pale girl, with red eyes, and she was screaming, and it seemed as she was trying to get out of my TV set, before I even had the chance to turn the TV off, I couldn't even move anyway, my mom had already come quickly to see what was up with that horrible noise. She immediately tried to turn the TV off from the remote, with no success. I had been able to recover my body in that short period so I stood up and tried to turn it off directly, but it was useless too, somehow I got so desperate that I just disconnected the whole thing, needless to say, I slept with my mom that night. Ghostly encounter, speaking of true creepy encounters, this incident occurred while I was in college. I was writing letters for my closest high school friends one night. Email and texts weren't in back then. While writing a letter for one of those friends, I felt a creepy chill that brought shivers down my spine as if the wind blew but it wasn't a windy nor rainy day back then. It was followed by the smell of candle burning and some sort of floral perfume, the next day. I found out that the classmate in mine died the night before. I don't believe in ghosts but many people say it was her and she dropped by our house the night she died to say goodbye. Death by Apple, in October of 2013, my husband and I were going to a local concert to see two friends perform. On our way back, I called home to check on the kids, and was talking to my one son, when I suddenly felt this incredible burning pain sensations throughout my body. I screamed and dropped the phone. The pain continued for about 10 minutes. It was horrible. Turns out that I was electrocuted by the current running through my cell phone. I was freaked out and called a doctor. She basically told me that if I called her, there was nothing else she could do. However, that kind of shock can stimulate a heart attack. I was lucky, so I am thinking that Apple has a problem with the car charger and I am mad as hell. I am a good letter writer and wrote a note to Tim Cook at Apple, scanned it to him on October 22nd. Full disclosure, my last documentary Apple engineers were great to me. 
I basically wrote what happened, and how I wanted to share my experience with him on the product ASAP, as I believed the product to be dangerous. At that time, I didn't know if it was an Apple manufactured product or a third party product, my goal was to alert Apple to the situation in case they needed to remove these products from the shelves, I didn't get much of a response from the CEO's office and called the Apple hotline, which was worse, they sent me to Alabama, where they offered me a genius bar appointment. I went back and forth trying to get someone to pay attention to what I was saying. This all happened over a three-day period, completely frustrated, I finally just sent the original copy of the letter to Tim Cook and kept a copy on my desk. I figured if they wanted to do something, they knew how to reach me. A few days later, when I walked into my office, there was a note on the copy of the letter. It was on a little yellow sticky and it said, careful in uneven caps. The word careful was underlined four times. I immediately went to my husband and said, why would you write a note on the top of my note to Apple? He looked at my strangely and said, I have no idea what you are talking about. I showed him the note, which I still have. Nope, not him. The only other occupants of our house were kids, and they weren't the least interested in a letter to the CEO of Apple, so here was a note from someone who came into my house and actually searched my desk to find the letter. Think about it, how would they know I wrote a letter unless they were listening to my calls? Very easy to do in my office space. They took one of my stickies to write the warning. Pretty brazen, at that point, my husband and I realized that something was terribly wrong. Someone was obviously listening to my calls and had been in our house. Perhaps more than once. We didn't lock our doors. We kept our keys in our cars, it has been pretty safe where we lived. No more. I went to the local sheriff. He explained to me when someone wants you to have an accident they can rewire your car phone charger so you can be electrocuted. As we sorted through what we knew, other things that didn't make sense. My passport disappeared, we realized that someone had actually tried to kill me. After their failed attempt, they came into my office and left me a note to ensure that I knew this was not an accident. How creepy is that, at that time, I was working on a few story ideas for a new documentary. One was a situation happening in East Palo Alto and another on locusts destroying the food supply in Madagascar. I also thought about the last documentary that I did which was airing on Showtime. All three of them had elements where I was challenging a powerful government or major corporation, I thought long and hard about what my options were. I was clear that I could never forgive myself if anything happened to my kids or my spouse. We immediately put cameras in and around our property to record any and all movement. The sheriff's office had our house in their daily route to make sure everyone was safe, I also closed my nonprofit and decided despite loving my work on human rights issues, I didn't ever want my work to endanger anyone that I loved. Things have calmed down since I stopped working on any projects. I consider myself very lucky. Creepy caller, when I was about 18, I got a telephone call from a strange man. The phone in my room rang, for you kids reading now, telephones used to actually be attached to walls, you didn't carry them around with you. I was one of the privileged few kids my age who not only had hidden own phone but also his own number, listed in the phone book and everything, and I went in and answered it. He asked, is this Courtney Ballard? And I acknowledged that it was. Then, he told me his name in a tone that implied that he expected me to know who he was. I was clueless, he asked me again if I was me, and I had no choice but to again say that yes, I was in fact me. He then said, I'm calling to make sure you're okay. You looked pretty shook up yesterday. At this point, I had to tell him that I had no idea what he was talking about. I had been fine the day before, he pressed on, yesterday. When you wrecked your car. Sir. I think you might have the wrong number. This is Courtney Ballard, right? Yes sir, my name is Courtney Ballard, and you live in, the name of the tiny town I lived in, yes sir, that's me, but I didn't wreck my car yesterday. Over the course of a very confusing and uncomfortable 15 minutes, he proceeded to tell me about our meeting the day before, I had come around the corner in front of his house too fast, lost control, and hit a large oak tree in his front yard. 
I had been shaken up, but the car was drivable and I'd refused all offers of help. He'd managed to get me to reveal my name before I left, and I'd told him that I was on my way to that small town, but nothing else, he described me, my size, my shape, my hair length, and color. He described my car, not the make and model, but the size, shape, and color, at first, I thought it was a put-on, that a friend was pranking me, but as the conversation progressed, the man's concern was convincing. He had been so worried about me that he'd looked me up and called to make sure I was okay, by the end of the conversation I managed to convince him that I was okay. That I really didn't know anything about it. He had given me his name and address over the course of the call, and he invited me to stop by sometime, when I hung up the phone, I was actually curious, I went outside and looked at my car. No damage, everything was just as I remembered it. I shook my head and walked back inside, a few days later I was driving home and this phone call was echoing around the back of my mind. I remembered the man's name, and what part of town he lived in. It wasn't far off of my route home, so I looked him up in the phone book, got his address, and headed that way. As I came around a sweeping bend in the road I saw a house like the one he had described. In the front yard was a large oak, and there were marks in the grass where a car has recently left the road, leading straight for the tree, and on the tree, paint that perfectly matched my car, I was so shaken that I almost ran off the road and into the tree.